<laughs> we are here. All right. How's everyone doing today? My name is Chef C. Artifogo with Easy to Gourmet, and today um, we received in a very special product from the Cooking Guild. And so we're gonna go ahead, check out the knife, give it a nice review, give you guys a little bit of information about it, where we got it from, and then I'm making my uh, famous black garlic rack of pork. So you're gonna see me preparing some of the vegetables and whatnot with this cleaver, just so you can see it in action a little bit. But like I always like to do with knives, I'm gonna show you how it comes directly out of the package. We're gonna give it an out of the box paper test just so we can see how sharp it is before we get into the vegetables. So let's start by opening this bad boy up. All right, so like most knives that we receive, they are, they arrive in plastic, which has an interior coating of oil to keep it protected. So let's take that off. So you can kind of see what this looks like. Now what's nice is, you know, this is made of 1095 high carbon steel. So very, very strong metal. It's got a really nice weight balance. It's not too forward heavy like a lot of cleavers are, especially one with this kind of strength. I know that, um, you know, this is made, you know, for the cooking guild in a, almost like a two in one style cleaver where, you know, it's thick and, you know, hard to back like the Serbian cleavers are so they can cut through and chop through bone and butter or I mean, whatever, you know, from the hardest to the softest material you can find. But in this case, much like their Serbian chef knife, you can see the way the, uh, the blade tip is curved and slightly beveled, which is going to allow for a sashimi style cut as well. So this does allow for a little bit more use than like a standard cleaver. So I'm excited about that. Now let's see how sharp it is coming out of the box. All right, so I'm back after hand washing my knife. Now this comes with a protective layer of oil. Um, you wanna wash that off, just hot soap and water. And then afterwards, give it a nice rub down. I like to use soy oil. So afterwards it keeps it nice and protected, you know, naturally carbon steel oxidizes. So using a natural oil keeps that from happening and also helps you through slicing your vegetables. With that said, I'm about to start preparing my black garlic um, soy pork and it's a nice standing rack. It's one of my favorite dishes and also it's a crowd favorite. Um, I'm gonna give the recipe to it on my YouTube video. Um, so that will be towards the end of this portion of it. In addition to that, I'm going to kind of break down some of the different characters of the flavor profiles in the more full length video of this. But for what we're doing now, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut through my Vidalia onion, my black garlic, and some fresh fennel. I've already sliced up some mushrooms earlier today. A nice mix of oysters um, and baby bellas and white, really simple stuff that you can go and you can find in your local market. I try to keep it a little bit more simple this time around. That way it's not so difficult for you guys to source your product as well. But let's see how this bad boy slices through all these vegetables. So let's get started there. We'll start with our Vidalia onion. Now, half of this Vidalia is gonna be set aside for sauteing with the mushrooms. And then the other half is gonna be put into the stock for making the black soy garlic sauce. Remember when cutting with any professional knife, well really any knife, to use the bear claw. Keep your fingers away from the blade. Don't need any accidents at home. These Georgia Vidalia onions are absolutely amazing. Extra sweet, less tan, they've got less of a bitterness to them. And they make a phenomenal stock. And they're really great in a semi cook. I try not to cook them all the way, I don't sweat them all the way out. I try to give them like a two thirds cook, about a 70, 65% par. That gives them lots of flavor and still the texture that I'm looking for.
go ahead and hand me that pot. Thank you, Phil. All right, so this is for my stock. That's for my saute. get the black garlic for those that don't know what black garlic is it's fermented garlic uh, so it gives it a much more savory earthy and yet sweet uh, slightly more acidic flavor so it's just a different flavor profile altogether it's something that can amplify any meal and give it just tremendous character and flavor and you'll notice Sticky. It's almost like a marmalade at this point, and that's going directly into my stock. Just squeezes right out, almost like roasted garlic. So for those that couldn't see what I just did there, I literally just took that bulb of black garlic and squeezed all that sticky deliciousness right on that. So now, let's get to our fennel. I should make light work of this fennel. Now I'm gonna save my greens for a different use. Maybe I'll finish it if you give it a little fry and hot oil and it creates a nice texture balance and yeah, as you can see, it's real easy here. this out. <laughs> All right, this exterior layer of fennel I use in the stock. And this I'm going to slice put it in my saute. If I have green like this, I also put that in my stock. So fennel has that cord, so you want to cut around your cord. Into the stock. Try not to waste anything I don't have to. Now it's the best. All right, so now, just like the onion, I'm gonna give it nice thin cuts. So, it only took me about two minutes to chop up all these vegetables. Um, on a scale of one to 10, you know, this knife is easily a 10, you know. I look forward to taking the time to continue using it and see, you know, how well it keeps an edge. You know, one of the marks of a great knife is edge longevity. Um, and then I'll sharpen it back up, but you know, I can tell I'm not gonna have any problems with this. I mean, the weighting is absolutely perfect. Uh, the way I was able to grip my hands on it was really comfortable. It was not offset. The uh, arch of the knife allows for both rocking action and chopping action. It's extremely sharp, so be careful out there. But I mean, absolutely love this knife. I look forward to continuing to get to use it and um, you know see how it performs as we go along. So expect to see this knife featured in a few more of my uh, YouTube videos moving forward. Otherwise, um, I'm gonna get to seasoning up this rack of pork and go from there. All right, so now we're gonna prepare our stock. Now, I'm going to post the recipe on the video as well, but also if you follow along with me, you'll be able to get it. It's actually a pretty simple recipe that just comes out really, really well. 
So everyone knows we already have our fennel and we have our black garlic and we have our Vidalia onion. So we have this set aside. So simply, I'm gonna start with uh, steeping our jasmine tea. So we use two cups of jasmine tea. So with that said, I personally much prefer using loose uh, Asian style jasmine tea. It's gonna have much better flavor. As you can see, it's vacuum sealed really well. Um, I personally, and for two cups of jasmine tea, I'm going to use a tablespoon and a half, or maybe a little tablespoon and a quarter of the loose tea. And then I'm going to pour my hot water. I'm going to let that steep over the next five minutes while we put everything else into the stock. water in. With this tea you never want your water to be hotter than 190 degrees because then you will actually bitter the tea and it will ruin the flavor of your stock. Remember quality in equals quality out. So let's get this set aside and we'll have that at the end. All right next eight tablespoons of butter. Now this is not a sponsorship, but I love the Vermont Cranberry Butter because it's a really well balanced, really fatty, uh, delicious butter. And again, quality in, quality out. All right, so I have six bay leaves, whole bay leaves. I have five ounces of low sodium soy sauce. You know, the Easy Gourmet peppercorn, uh, peppercorn Mix, if everyone looks back at our previous videos, is a peppercorn melange plus green Szechuan peppercorns, toasted and ground. I just put a, a light grazing. It's roughly one, table, one teaspoon worth of uh, mixed peppercorn. And then granulated uh, roasted garlic. This, I put about uh, one tablespoon of, because I want it to be a little extra roasty and garlicky and remember we're cooking our stock in a 16 quart pot from 16 quarts all the way down to one quart so it's got plenty of time to reduce and flavor one Myers lemon now your Myers lemon I remove the sticker cut into slices and I put the whole slice in Now, in this circumstance, I prefer Myers lemon over standard lemon because I want it to be a little bit sweeter and I don't want it to be as astringent. All right, now, I use one teaspoon of ground white peppercorns. So these are whole white peppercorns that I toast and grind. They have a very unique flavor. I absolutely love the way they taste, but I want this flavor is specific in this mix. So you can get pre-ground white peppercorn, but it's not gonna be as good. Just take the time to toast out that oil, grind it up. You guys have seen my you know, my granite pistol and mortar, grind that bad boy down, and I promise you, everything you use it in is gonna taste that much better. And that goes really with, with any peppercorn, or your cardamoms and your all spices, uh, any kind of roasted spice-based seeds. All right, then last but not least, we're going to add my jasmine tea. So, small conical filter. I got my two cups. Now, I'm actually going to let this kind of sit together and macerate into its own unique flavor. Then, I'm 
going to fill my 16 quart pot with water, add this to it. I've got one more Vidalia onion that I'm going to be chopping up and tossing in there as well. So it calls for one and a half Vidalia onions. And then it's going to cook over the course of the next six to eight hours. It's going to go from 16 quarts all the way down to one quart, at which point um, we're going to use our hand mixer and it's our submersion blender and we're going to blend it up with a little bit of extra butter and give it the viscosity we're looking for and you'll see uh, the way it tops over our pork and our mushroom so it's going to end up being a really high character like nice viscous super flavorful sauce that's just going to go amazing with our pork all right so now we're going to season our pork like i mentioned now there's two ways to do this you can do it the more common way, which is great for a household if you're not you know, familiar with uh, French cutting. And that's when you get your standing pork roast, take a string and run it on each of the bones. And this will just help keep your rib rack together throughout the roasting process. And then separately, you can cut out the meat in between and around the bones. And that's called Frenching your rack. Now, I like to French my racks, so, but in this circumstance, I'm doing a more standard stand because it's a little bit easier for those at home that don't have the uh, expertise or the knife skills to start cutting around the bone. So in this circumstance, we're gonna go ahead and leave it as is. I already strung it up, but it's very simple. Just take one string, knot it toward the back, and then roll it individually, and knot each one towards an end. See, really simple. And you see how the bones are linear? This is just gonna keep your rack together and minor slices between each bone will make it easier for you to cut these separate once it's went ahead and roasted. If you would have not sliced it beforehand, it'll make the carving portion, the carving uh, part a little bit more difficult. You'll see that once it's cooked. But right, as far as what I season this with, very simple. I use pink Himalayan salt. Black garlic salt, which is actually becoming more and more common in stores. So uh, if you can't find this, you can always get it on Amazon. Uh, if you can't find it at all, then feel free to just take another couple cloves of black garlic and mince it up and then smear it around your rack. All right. The easy peppercorn blend. And Aleppo pepper. So for those who aren't familiar with Aleppo pepper, this is a pepper that's from the like, Serbian region. It's a very romantic, absolutely beautiful peppercorn. It's not too spicy, it's not too high on the Scoville scale, but it does add just enough spice and a little extra savor to all of your meals that you use them. All right, I'm gonna let this sit for about a half an hour to an hour. It only takes about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours to roast your pork to 155 degrees, which is very important. You don't wanna undercook pork because it can be you know, unhealthy, deadly to you, um, salmonella poisoning. But at the same time, you don't wanna overcook it because then you're gonna have really chewy, you know, distasteful meat. So have your meat thermometer available. Put it on at 300, at 300 degrees. I like 295 to uh, 300 for the first like hour and a half. And then I like to finish it at 375 degrees to get some of that fat, a little bit crisp on the outside and finish it at that temperature. Just adds a little bit of a texture variance. And then uh, we'll pour our black garlic sauce out. We'll get our vegetables sauteed up. And then you guys uh, next, I'm going to Finish up the stock so I can get that on. This is gonna sit and kind of cure for a little bit. And then um, I'm gonna get everything in the oven. I'm gonna get that stock cooked down. I'll do a little fast forwarded video of how the stock starts to how the sauce ends. Um, but it's really not that difficult, guys. Just cook from 16 uh, quarts all the way down to one quart. Run it through a chinois or a colander. You just wanna take out any of those extra leaves and those pieces of onion. And then you wanna thicken it up with a little bit of butter and then that hand mixer. So I don't need to show you guys how to do that again. Go, you can go all the way back 
to our very first goose video and you can see the way I take a 16 quart sauce and I reduce it down to a one quart sauce and create that beautiful viscosity. So reference that video if you want to see how that's done. I'm trying to keep this one short for you guys. So otherwise, um, let's go ahead and get to that stock and get this thing cooked. Thank you. 